Well, today, my sister's here on the job site, and she's gonna help me start putting in the rooftop deck. Are you ready for that? Not in this weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 90 degrees outside, and she's not too excited about that. But, fun fact is, she actually helped me build that bus right there. So she's actually a bus building expert. That's the reason it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, today on the agenda, obviously there's tons of things, as all of you know, but one of the main things that I really wanna get done is putting this wood in. This rooftop deck has been sitting here and it is just ready to start getting installed. And since I have my sister here today actually to help me out, it's going to be a pretty fun day because this is her first day on the short bus build. Uh, fun fact about Christina here, she's in the market and she's currently looking for a short bus, uh, or actually a shuttle bus, right? You, yeah, you've decided, bus. Yeah, she's decided on a shuttle bus. So I've actually been helping her try to find one. We're gonna get started on this cedar wood, get this stuff installed and then uh, see what else we get ourselves into so and it's free labor and she's then she's getting vlogging <laughs> who thinks she should start her own YouTube channel all right that's just me let's get going <laughs> yeah. okay so I'm gonna encourage everyone to always measure the wood they get from the store because we had four that were all exactly eight foot and we had one that was actually eight foot and a quarter so i got to trim a quarter out of this one um, but it is really important to make sure you do this because if you think about it we're trying to make a deck that is a perfect square we're doing an eight by eight deck which means we need our beams to all be the same so you don't have any weird curves or anything in it so let's take a quarter inch off of this one and then get them up on the roof <laughs> you can do it! I swear you can! Stop making me laugh! Put the end up to me! Well, I can't if you're making me laugh! Pass me the piece of cedar! <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we have all of our holes marked where we're gonna be drilling down through the two by four. So now that we have them all marked, we can get them down on the ground and get them drilled and sanded. I think this time, Christina's gonna hand them down and then I will get them because last time she passed them up and she wasn't very happy. They were kind of heavy. I complimented, I said I was getting a good workout. Yeah, she's getting a good workout, which also means she only wants one workout of the day. I'm just gonna chuck them off now. Just chuck them. Now that we got all the beams on the ground, I can start marking out exactly where I wanna put my holes. And then I've got my drill right there and we just gotta pretty much drill the holes. So this is probably gonna be a pretty quick process, but once we get these done, then we gotta transfer those holes to the metal. And that's gonna be where the fun part comes in because we gotta drill through a two by four. These cedar boards definitely took quite a bit of time per board, but they're completely sanded now. And the next step on the list is going to be putting stain on because I'm hoping I can get the stain on before the sun goes down and then they'll be ready to go when uh, we start up tomorrow. So I'm gonna grab the stain, get some stain on here and then let them sit overnight. Whew. Sun's getting bright. Good morning, everyone. Today, 
those guys are going in along with a bunch of other stuff shipments are coming in and uh, I think we're actually gonna get started on the subfloor inside of the school bus getting the floors all patched up and ready to go but first thing on my list was I woke up bright and early this morning thinking man I want to see those pieces of wood go up onto the rooftop deck and get those holes drilled because I know that's going to be quite a tedious job to drill through those metal beams but that's the first thing on my list today and I'm going to get going on those get them on up there. Trying to get it to catch the. There it goes. Nope. There it goes. All right. We are moving and cruising on getting these things in. We've got three more bolts to get in, and then all of the deck rafters are in, which means at that point, if anyone's ever built a deck before, uh, once we have these beams up, pretty much the entire deck is built just like a traditional deck. Uh, we'll cap the outsides, we'll put our deck boards down, frame it out, and uh, you know we're going to be pretty good to go from there. But I know Dale's getting ready, getting the ladder over here, so I don't want to stall him up any bit, and we'll get these last two in. All right, at this point, all of them are mounted down, they're permanently in, and we're good to go to now order the wood, measure, and then get everything shipped in so we can start putting our deck boards down. So the next thing that I wanna do is make sure that I power wash and clean the roof off, because now I have all those metal shavings from drilling the holes, and I found in the past that when you don't get those off too quick, they start to rust, and then they ruin the color of your roof. And I know, I mean, you all know, that Luke put so much work into painting this roof we want to make sure it at least stays clean for as long as possible, right? So uh, let's get that power washer and get cleaning. All right, I just finished up making all my little patch pieces for the floors. Uh, there's been quite a few holes in this floor and uh, the easiest thing for me to do in this case is just going to be patch them. You can see a couple of the patches here. Um, if you've got a big bus and the floors are completely just steel, you can weld them straight through. Uh, one of my issues is that we have aluminum down on the bottom, so I'm not gonna try to get into that. I don't have the weld to be able to do it. Um, so in this case, this is the best option I have. If you don't know how to weld and you don't know how to grind or do anything, I mean, there's a lot of other options that you can do out there. Um, you can get products like uh, an, an epoxy and you can fill the holes with that. Um, you can put, uh, I know some people out there, I've never done it, but they use uh, pennies or, or uh, just, you know, little pieces of metal or washers and they just kind of caulk and put them. But uh, this is what we're doing. So I'm gonna kind of get through, be riveting these down and then uh, we're gonna be sealing on top of it. So we make sure that we're completely sealed and waterproof and then move on from there. As I was grinding some of the patches for the subfloor, which we actually got quite a few in, a pretty cool package just showed up. And this is one of those packages that a lot of you in the comments have been like, Mike, why aren't you doing this? We are doing it. We just, we just had to wait for a shipment. All of our LEDs, headlights, oh my gosh. 
Come on. Come on. I know that a lot of people were wondering why we put these back in originally, and that is because I needed to use the bus to actually go get supplies. Because believe it or not, this thing's a great travel mobile for going to Home Depot and stuff getting plywood. So I had to put these back in, but these were on back order. So now we get to go through the process of switching out everything, including these top marker lights and stuff, all out to LEDs. We also got new headlights, which I think they're gonna be a pretty good upgrade. Hopefully they fit. I mean, they said they fit, but we all know how that goes. The front headlights are completely in now. They're pretty easy, it's just plug and play, a couple screws, but that is a huge upgrade. If anyone has ever driven a school bus, a box truck, an express van, any of those things, you probably know that those headlights are not too great from the factory, so it's a great thing that we just replaced those. Next thing on the list that we can do is take all of these out and replace them with the LEDs. So hopefully everything goes smoothly with these, they fit perfectly and uh, we can turn them on. We got this side completely in, but here's a problem that I realized, didn't realize it earlier. Uh, all the old holes for the old lights, they need to be patched. So I'm gonna have to come back here and actually tack weld these up, pull these lights back out, finish it up. But I wanted to at least put them in so you could see what they're gonna look like when we're actually done. And uh, old side, new side, definitely worth the upgrade. If anyone's interested also, uh, these LEDs that I got that will fit your school bus, um, they're four and a half inch, I believe. You can check the uh, actual listing, but I'll put them in the description. So if you wanna check them out, you can click that link. And do know that that link is an affiliate link. So if you do choose to use that link, uh, Navigation Nowhere will receive a commission from it. So do use it at your own uh, you know, discretion. But if you just wanna be interested in them, check them out, go feel free. You don't have to buy anything. And uh, you know, I'm gonna get started on this side, get these kind of figured out. And then we're gonna have to go back and patch those holes. Good morning, everyone. Today, my first task is gonna be getting the lights that we just put in last night all wired up and set so we can get them tested. And Luke is currently working on putting all the marker lights in. So all of these lights that are up here for the running lights, uh, he's getting all those caulked in and waterproofed. And once we do that, floors are pretty much almost sealed. And as you can see, we just got the wood inside the bus, which will soon be getting installed. So uh, first things first is getting these things wired up so we can get all our LEDs working, and then see what they look like. All right, just put the ground screw in. Dale's ready to go. All right, Dale, let's see if we made it work. Try the, are you pressing the brake? Okay. Brake and, and the turn soon. You got the left turn on right now? It's not flashing. Can you put it in reverse? Okay, take it out of reverse. All right, so we just confirmed that our running lights, uh, it doesn't seem as though we're getting power, might be a ground issue. Uh, might just be the fact that Luke's currently working on the marker lights, so maybe our just running lights aren't working. And uh, my turn signal isn't flashing, so that could be a relay. That could be a wiring issue. So I got a little bit of investigating to do, but thanks Dale for helping me test it out. And uh, Or you're just an amateur, bud. Yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> Having a bit of trouble troubleshooting the back license issues. Hey, look. Hey. hey Luke, how's it going real quick? Dandy. Yeah. Little update on what Luke's doing. Uh, he's got all the LED upper lights in. but we're still trying to figure out why they're not working. So we found a fuse panel that's up here, and then I found another little fuse block panel that is under here, 
which you can't really see. There it goes. Oh, lighting, lighting, lighting. There it is. Um, but essentially, neither of those have the relays. So what I decided to do was the, the uh, driver's side wasn't working, the passenger side was. So me and Dale tested out the passenger side, found out where the relay was clicking just simply by listening. I found it underneath here, which pretty much tells me then that most likely, as a guess, that the driver's side turn signal is also probably right there. Um, so we just tested that out and I'll show you what I was doing to figure it out. Sorry, by the way, that there's gonna be quite a bit of beeping. This box right here is where the relays are. I'll turn the key. All right. So if I put my finger on here, I can feel the passenger turn signal clicking. And now you can hear it buzzing. That's the one that's not working and I can feel it buzzing right here. So all I gotta do is get this box out and then I can replace the relay. And uh, at that point, we should be able to fix the issue and get the lights working. But uh, it's definitely one of those things where when things aren't working, you just gotta keep a level head, go back to square one. It's electrical, power in, power out. Just find out what's going in between and start troubleshooting through it. All right, after an, after an extreme amount of frustration, I found, ooh, let's get out of the light. I found these three fuses that were bad and one of them was controlling my dash. So that's why my odometer and my uh, my odometer, my oil gauge, my temperature gauge, none of those were working. Couldn't figure out why fuse blew. Uh, one in doubt, it's usually a fuse. And then I found two others that were also blown. Uh, the one I believe to be part of the turn signal system and the other one I tested out as the marker lights. So if we test them now, uh, we should actually have all of our lights, our running lights working and our brake lights should be working and the dash should come on. But we'll figure that out, let's test it and then we'll get back to it. All right, so Turn on the key and then turn the running lights on and those two should come on. Nailed it, got those two. Now can you press the brake? Brakes are on. That's the brake? All right, brake off. All right, now turn, now brake off. Ru uh, running lights off. They're all good. Awesome. Well, and apparently the reverse light works as well which means the last thing that we have to do is get the turn signals to work. And uh, what I figured out with these turn signals is that they actually, they actually do work. The issue is, is this relay, uh, this relay right here. So if you look at it, I'll just read it. It says EF29 and essentially this relay is not made for LED lights. This is only for, um, the old lights that used to be in here. So for me to get these turning signals to work, I actually need to replace this relay with a solid relay. It's uh, the number for this one, which might be the same for some of you out there is EF29L, which is a solid relay. There's no moving parts in it and they're rated for LEDs. This one's not. So when I try to use this one that was originally in the bus, pretty much what happens is nothing. They just turn on and the light just looks like a brake light. So I need to order one of these, get those switched. But what that pretty much means is we've tested everything. We've, uh, you know, continuity, continuity tested it. We're sure that everything's working. So at this point we can put it all back together and wire it up. I just got one light run. Luke's currently doing the floors. We're trying to finish them up so we can start the subfloor, but we're both just, you know, we just want to see the marker light work. So let's just, Oh, Luke, we got light. No, 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 those don't work yet. I only did one. Catch up. I am sorry, I'm going as fast as I can. Ugh. All right, those are next. You're up next, guys. While Luke is wiring up all the lights on the inside, it's kind of exciting, honestly. Like, this floor is completely prepped and ready to get painted in the subfloor. We're starting some wiring on the inside. It's, it's starting to happen. Uh, but one thing that I have to finish really quickly before we can do the big light reveal is I need to fix these. So I gotta weld these holes and I gotta get rid of the old gasket from the old lights so that then we could put it in, paint it, and then it's nice and clear, just like this one. So. You know, we're gonna get there pretty soon and uh, sun's going down, which means it's almost time for lights on.
All right, I think it's pretty much dark enough. The paint is dry. You, I know you could barely see it because it's great because we're gonna put lights on. But we're gonna pop these LEDs in on both sides and then the sun is pretty much completely down. It's gonna be dark enough and the next time you see this school bus, it's gonna be lit up. It's gonna be a friggin' Christmas tree. Luke says it's gonna be a Christmas tree. It's not gonna be a Christmas tree. There's not that many lights. But it is exciting that we're at this point because we're going inside next. So let's get these lights in and then move on. Hold on. Oh man. Oh my gosh, that thing looks like a freaking UFO. <laughs> Holy crap! Dude! Look, oh my gosh, look at the freaking light bar! Oh my gosh, here. You, yeah, yeah, I'll turn the marker lights. You hold that one. Mike's like a little kid. I'm not a little. Okay, I'm totally a little kid. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Did we do good? <laughs> oh man, that looks good. Oh yeah. Woohoo! Good job. Oh, that looks so good. Yo, dude, let's look at the back. Like the running lights and the brake lights and the. Oh, my heart is so happy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. What do you think, Dale? It has definitely been a long time getting to this stage in the build, but wow. Well, I think we're gonna wrap it up there. So, you know, at this point we're done with the outside. We're moving on to the inside and the floors are ready to start going in. So uh, check this one off the list. And uh, next time we see you, we're putting some subfloor in. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Dale again coming to you with an update. I'm super excited because if you can see over here we got all these boards sanded ready for stain thanks to Mike's sister <laughs> over here. Mike disappeared about an hour ago and nobody's seen him so we're not sure what he's doing. <laughs> There's rumors that he was in taking a nap but I don't know but Christina has done a great job here and we're gonna get some stain on it and whenever Mike shows back up Dale, Dale, I'm standing right here. What? What? Where? <laughs> oh, when did you show up, Mike? Oh, how was your nap? You can't how leave was this, How you was your nap? Alone. I walk away for two seconds to go get the stain, and then this is happening. <laughs> yeah. We gotta have a little fun here on the job. I'm telling you. We have fun all the time. Well, 100% of the time. Okay. You know, you got me hooked. I, I don't know what else to tell you. I gotta get staining, Dale. Well, uh, nobody's stopping you. Nobody, you know, as I said earlier, a good crew makes a good supervisor. It's not the other way around. So you're making me look bad, all right? Get to work.